Hey folks, welcome back. And I have to make an assumption here, which is if you clicked on this video, chances are you have a Tacoma and you've probably experienced in one way or another that it just doesn't have enough power for your needs or even just your, your preference. Um, and if that's the case, you're wondering the same thing that I was when I made the decision to buy a supercharger. Is it worth it? Well, I have the Magnuson supercharger for the 3.5 liter Tacoma engine. I've lived with it now for about six months and it's taken me a little bit longer to write a review on it or even create a video or anything simply because I wanted to actually give you the real deal review on it, not just you know the, the hype when you're in the honeymoon phase with something like that. So sit back, enjoy, and uh, let's get into it. So the first thing that really stands out about a Magnuson supercharger on this 3.5 liter Tacoma is that when you look at it from the engine bay side of stuff, it's a lot smaller than I expected it to be. Um, matter of fact, it actually takes up less real estate uh, than the stock engine cover and all that stuff. So you kind of have more access to getting to your motor if you need to, which is kind of nice. but. It does look like a really high quality piece. Um, I, I kind of feel like if it didn't say Magnuson on it and it was just black, you would think it was from the factory that way. So that's, um, I think that is a huge positive of getting this particular supercharger. I can't speak for the Harrop one, but, but this looks good in the motor. I think it's uh, a step up from the Gen 2 TRD supercharger and you know, obviously these are things that have to be engineered for, you know, lots of different factors. And considering there's just not a lot of room between the hood and the engine, the top of the motor, I think Magnuson did a great job. Okay, so that is quite a bit of thrust, but not as much as you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> so let me explain that. Um, I can definitely tell that the supercharger is doing something. And I think there's a lot of commentary online on the forum saying that, you know, it, the, the truck actually just kind of feels more stock than, than anything if you have a little bit of weight like I do on the truck. And I'm not going to disagree with some of that. But the reality is the power of this particular charger really comes on on the second half of your RPM band. So what does that mean? That means if you really wanna feel it, you, you kinda of have to put your foot into it. And when you do, the truck does move. But I think that the power band itself is kinda of short. And Magnuson, at the time of this recording, I think we're on V7 of the software. It's still locked, you, you can't change it. Uh, in the future, that could be a possibility. Open it up to, um, other tuners and such. And I think in situations where that's a possibility, we'll be able to get more out of it and maybe more power across the entire band. But honestly, the thrust is enough where if you need to make a pass, you can. And I think like in general, that's kind of what we want. And everywhere else, it's pretty civilized. The one thing that on the daily that I didn't expect was I don't really hear the supercharger. I mean, 
you know, I've never owned a supercharged vehicle before. I've owned lots of turbos, but not anything supercharged. And I think what's interesting is I've always read or heard about, you know, the, the typical supercharger whine that you would hear. And I was kind of excited for that. I thought that would be kind of a neat um, sort of byproduct of owning it, uh, just to be able to play around with the sound. And I, I'm a guy who loves sound. I love loud cars, but it's pretty silent. And I, you know, I guess that's by design. Um, the way it spools and everything really just doesn't, it just doesn't make a lot of noise. And so that's what I mean when I say it's almost OEM plus in how it behaves and how it looks and definitely how it sounds. One more strange thing, and I need to talk to Magnuson to better understand what I'm about to say to you, but I wanna put it out there because nobody has mentioned this on the forums or anything else that I've seen, which is in the third gen, using this supercharger, if you push the ECT button, um, what happens is, you know, that's supposed to be like a mapping that helps hold transmi transmission gearing a little bit longer, but it definitely feels like the truck just in stock form moves a little bit faster when you push that button. Here, with the supercharger, if that button is not pushed, the truck actually feels completely OEM in stock. If you push that though, that's when the, the supercharger really actually kind of kicks into gear, I think. It's weird. Like I can, like right now I have it on and even at low speeds, low RPM, I'm doing 1500 RPM, you can really tell that there's torque underneath your right foot. If I put my foot down, the truck's gonna move. And if I undo the button, it doesn't feel that way. So I'm, I'm curious because with some of the negative comments online about the supercharger not really being as high performance as people wanted it to be, I'm wondering if they've actually tried this. It's such a simple thing, but I'm wondering if Magnuson somehow tuned that button to actually open up more of the boost uh, to make it available across the RPM band. Not sure, I gotta get that answer. And if anybody knows for sure, I would love to know. So if you could just comment below, that'd be great. But if not, just know that when you push that with this supercharger, the truck is going to be powerful and you'll be able to tell where your money went. However, and here's the drawback, because there is a drawback, right? If not, why wouldn't you just leave it like that all the time? The drawback is it becomes less daily drivable. And what I mean by that is, you know, you'll be just driving off the line and though you have a lot of torque, it'll just take the RPMs way up to like five or six before it shifts, even if you're just trying to go slow. So it's like this mismatch of situation. You just want to put around town at that point and you just want to feel the power, but the engine, with the with the supercharger doesn't care what it wants is to kind of unleash all the horsepower and so that's why it's it's not really the right thing to do just putting around town so what i do my recommendation is you know when you're just driving around town just drive it in normal mode when you're on the freeway um and you just you know want to be a little bit faster you want to get somewhere a little quicker make a pass something along that line so then hit the button and you should be good to go. Okay, so I do think we need to talk about the price a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so what does it cost? Well, it's right around 6,600 bucks just for the charger kit. But you also have to factor in that because you're gonna be doing this install, you're gonna need to do the coolant flush. You're also gonna need to do spark plugs. Well, it's actually, you don't need to, but while you're there, it kind of makes sense. Um, and then oil change and things of that nature. So, you know, there's a little bit of like maintenance cost that this install kind of forces on you, um, but that's okay. I think let's just call the parts, um, the kit and just the install right around nine to $10,000, I think is a fair guess based on um, where you get it installed. Or if you install it yourself, you can save about 1500 bucks, maybe 2000 bucks. So keep that in mind. You know, if you're getting, and I, you know, I'll put the figures here on the screen, you know, roughly 30% more power and torque, 
I think that's a healthy number for what you spent. But it's not a big enough number where the truck feels transformed completely. This truck does not feel transformed. If I gave any of you viewers out there a chance to drive my truck around and didn't tell you it was supercharged, you might not even realize it. But the fact of the matter is the truck weighs right around 66 to 7,000 pounds. That amount of weight <laughs> to move this freely is actually pretty impressive. So that's what you're paying for. The supercharger is allowing me to keep this truck uh, daily drivable and feel like it's um, still very usable. And, you know, that's worth it to me. But I think the cost is really a personal decision for each and everybody because almost 10 grand, that's a lot of dough. I mean, I can think of a thousand ways to spend $10,000 that aren't this. But if you love your truck, if you love, you know, building it up and actually using it, I think it's a valuable investment. I also think that on resale value, it definitely pays you back too. Now you might not get $10,000 worth out of it, but it'll definitely help hold the resale value of your truck. All right, folks, so let's conclude some stuff. Um, should you spend the money? Should you supercharge your truck? My recommendation is save up your dollars and go for it because I don't think you're gonna regret it. It's not a perfect solution by any stretch, but it is the best solution I think that's out there that will allow you to still enjoy your truck, build it without worrying about weight. And at the same time, it's totally reversible and even better, it's carb exempt in California. That in itself makes it worth it to do it. So that would be what I would say. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Just put questions down below in the comment section and I'll get to them uh, as best I can. All right, folks, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you guys on the next one.